Here's something you can do to help you get better at solving problems in the class. So, or actually just programming problems in general. You may have found that uh, you're feeling confused after each problem that you solve and you move on to the next problem and you're like, okay, I'm still confused. Um, another thing that you can do in addition to solving newer and newer problems is just repeat a problem that you've already solved. Um, so, for example, uh, maybe you solve a problem by guess and check. So you like change something from an equals to a or a less than equals to an equal uh, less than, or a one to a zero, or you change maybe a plus to a minus or a max to a min or something, and eventually the code passes all the tests, and you're like, okay, cool, I'm gonna move on to the next one. And you're studying and trying to like get to the point where you can just go really fast and solve problems really quickly. Um, maybe you want to get to the point where you like can think about, yeah, I want this behavior, so I'll code this way. Um, or maybe you're there and you want to get to the point where you're like, the only thing that's stopping me from solving this faster is that I don't know how to type any faster than I'm typing right now. And, and like I have the entire thing. I know all the steps that I need to do. Um, a few of the problems that uh, we have gone over in this class, I have felt that way. <laughs> um, like, I already know how to do them. I've done them a lot. I've done this thing that I'm about to describe, and I can solve the problem. I can get to it. Like, the, the only problem is, like, how fast can I type? Um, or the, the thing slowing me down is how fast can I type? All right, so... Steps that are the thing that I'm talking about. What 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 steps am I talking about? So, uh, the first thing is like, if you find yourself solving a problem and you're like, "Cool, I'm not exactly sure why this works, and the thing that I just tried doesn't work," but like, okay, I've got it now. Uh, so when you have that, you take that file and make a copy of it. Um, so like, say the file is called file.js. Uh, make a copy called file.original.js. So I'm going to use as an example uh, removing duplicates from an array. Um, so I have here, let's say, remove duplicates.js, and here's a bunch of tests, and it passes all of them. I'm going to make a copy. So remove duplicates, uh, and I will name the copy. Uh, remove duplicates dot original dot js um, and let's go into remove duplicates uh, here's all the tests and then here's the code that ended up working to remove all the duplicates um, and uh, let's go back to the steps the steps are so we've created a copy so we've done that part now, and that means we can mess up the uh, file.js, so remove duplicates.js. We can mess this one up, and we can always copy back in uh, remove duplicates.original.js. Um, and let me just go check. Original.js is there. Cool. Uh, diff remove duplicates and remove duplicates.original.js. They're exactly the same. Okay, cool. So uh, this is the original. I'm just going to kill that one and go back to original, uh, or close, close that one and go back to remove duplicates.js. Remove duplicates original is still there. Um, now I'm gonna go to the innermost code. Uh, let me bring that up side by side if I can. Okay, uh, so bumble through, get to a solution. We just, let's say that we already did that off camera. Uh, make a copy, go back to the original file, go to the innermost line of code. So what I mean by that is like this line is indented really, really far. It's inside of this if, which is inside of this for, which is inside of this for, which is inside of this function. So I'm going to the innermost line of code. And the reason for that is those lines of code are usually the most concrete and they are the easiest to recreate and the easiest to comment the like the less 
the less, uh, the least, uh, I don't know, leaps of logic to get to them. Um, so break, I don't think we've gone over that in this class, but uh, it just means end the for loop uh, right now. <laughs> so here's a for loop. When this line of code is reached, it will stop iterating. It won't try and check again whether it should keep going. Um, so I'm going to write that comment. And then uh, so I've commented the code. And the goal while I'm commenting the code is to be able to recreate the code from just the comment. And then I'm going to delete the code and see if I can recreate the code. Huh, recreate the code. Uh, let's say from the comment, and um, if need be, go check the original code. Um, so like if you get stuck, uh, if you get stuck, go back to the original code uh, to see what to do. Um, Uh, for hints, let's say that. For hints. Okay, so uh, I'm here. I see the comment says end the for loop right now. Or, yeah, so it says end the for loop right now. So the code that would make that happen is if I said break. Cool. Um, so that's, that's these lines right here. I've commented the code, I've deleted the code, and I've recreated the code. And then uh, I can, this code right here is at the same level. Um, so I'm going to say uh, mark uh, or say that there, that there is a duplicate. OK. And then I'm going to delete this code. And then. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can recreate the code. So let's see if I can recreate the code. Um, say that there is a duplicate. Uh, so I already know that this variable here is tracking whether or not there is a duplicate. Uh, this variable, duplicate. So I'm going to say duplicate equals true. Troy, true. Um, OK, so that's that. Oh, hi, Zoe. Um, oh, she's just, hi, great time to visit. Um, uh, okay, and so now I've, I've finished all the lines that are indented this much. Um, so I'm going to go, uh, so that's here, and I'm going to go up a level. So what that means is like indented a little bit less. So that's this right here. If uh, a... Let's see. I don't know how to comment this without just literally saying exactly what it is. Is the same thing as B. So that's what that is. Um, and then I'll try deleting the code. And uh, I just deleted a closed curly bracket here. So I'll say if a is strictly equal to B. I guess I could have said that. Um, and then I'll do this. And can I do this? I can. Oh, that looks awful, though. Yeah, OK. Uh, I can do that cool thing, but it doesn't quite show up like I want. But that's OK. All right. Um, cool. So now I have done that whole thing. Um, and so I've uh, gone back up to here, the inner, innermost line of code that is not already uh, processed during this algorithm. Um, so these lines of code we hadn't actually processed yet. Uh, now 
these lines of code have all been processed. So let's see what's the next line of code that has not yet been processed. Um, that is the innermost line of code. So that would be like right here. Let b equals array at index uh, at index b index. Um, save the value in array at b index into a variable b. Okay. Um, and then let's see if I can recreate this line of code from just this comment. Let b equals array at uh, b index and an alarm just went off okay uh, so now I think I've done yeah I've done all of the lines that are at this much indentation so I'll go up a level um, and here there's this thing is a little bit further indented um, than this for loop up here so I don't know use your judgment eventually do the whole file uh, in tending towards doing the innermost things first uh, so let's see put uh, put put a on the end of the results okay and then results dot push a Okay, uh, and if not duplicate, um, if uh, duplicate is not true, <laughs> um, okay, and then I'll say if not duplicate, um, I guess I could change the variable, actually, that's probably a better way of doing this, so I could say... Um, and this is actually kind of typical uh, while going through this process rather than saying duplicate I'm gonna say unique um, uh, let me do that in this way unique okay um, so now I want to flip the logic so I'll assume that it's unique until I have reason to believe that it's not and then here, I'm going to flip this logic too. So now, uh, if duplicate is not true, um, becomes if the element is unique. Uh, OK. I, I think that's a genuine improvement on this code. Um, and that was not prior planned. OK. So now I've got to comment this line of code. Uh, let's see. Uh, index variable b index start starts at a index goes to end of array uh, goes up by one one okay gonna go down to here and try to recreate uh, for oop, ah, can't type skill issues let b index equal a index uh oh so I, I remember that this is actually incorrect uh, starts at a index uh, plus one um, a index plus one and then uh, goes to the end of array b index is less than array dot length and b index plus plus and then we want curly bracket and matching close curly bracket Here, um, cool. Okay, so all of that is commented, and then we'll say, uh, oh, 
this line of code that we actually just just made. Um, start off assuming the element is unique. Okay. Um, let unique equal true. And you can vary. I'm actually doing this faster than I usually do um, because I want this to be a uh, short video. Um, okay. So like I would normally comment and then close my eyes and uh, wait for a couple seconds and then start going. Um, let's see. Let a equals array at index. Um, set a equal to array at a index. Okay. Um, let a equals array at a index. Oh my goodness. Can't type. Um, okay, so I think all of these lines are commented now except that line and that line. Alrighty. Let's go for it. Uh, start a index at zero. Go to end. Oh, hi Zoe. Of array. Uh, go up by one. That one's a little bit easier of a for loop. Matching close curly bracket. There's probably some keyboard shortcut that automatically deletes both of them. Or something um, for let a index equals zero a in uh, index is less than array dot length a index uh, plus plus okay and put this here, okay, return result, result, uh, return result, and create a result variable that starts off as an empty array. Let result equal empty array. Um, and this, I hope, will still work. I actually did make a change here that may have broken it. Probably not, but it's not exactly the same code. So let's find out. Um, oh, I don't have. Oh, <laughs> okay, I did break it. Um, I also don't have uh, results.push. Okay, I made a typo. Um, and that's on line 26. Let's go to line 26. Results, result.push. Um, but I made another change that also may have caused it not to work. So uh, I don't have the fancy check marks worked out on this one. I just have... I have to manually inspect. So we have an empty array goes to an empty array, an array containing zero goes to an array containing zero. Zero one, zero one, that looks good. Zero zero becomes just zero, that looks good. Zero zero one becomes zero one, that looks good. Zero 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 one one becomes zero one. Zero one zero becomes one zero. So we can see here, this is the only one where you can tell uh, the difference between the two different ways that we solved it in class. The left-hand side or the right-hand side of one gets saved. Um, zero is a duplicate item, but which one do we save? Uh, so that looks good. Zero, one, one, two, that also looks good. Cool. Um, so now, uh, now that is a solution to the whole thing. Um, yeah, so that is what you can do to really drive home exactly uh, like how a specific problem was solved and um, get really, really comfortable with solving problems like this one. Uh, all right, bye.